So today I want to show you how to create real-world 3D terrain inside of Adobe After Effects. And this is going to work with the native AE cameras and all of the depth of field parameters. And we're using two premium tools in this video. We're going to be using GeoLayers to create the maps, and we're going to be using Helium to basically enable all the 3D features. I'll leave links to both of those down in the video description. Those are affiliate links, so thank you if you use those. Okay, I've already got GeoLayers 3 and Helium installed. Now I'm gonna come over here to the GeoLayers 3 panel and before I even create a map comp, you see this button right here that says Create 3D Landscape. I like to do this from the beginning because it kind of sets up an entirely new comp. So doing it from the beginning is kind of like a best practices thing. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna change the resolution to Ultra HD 4K. So manually type in uh, 3840 by 2160, 24 frames per second, and I'll do a 10 second map comp. So here are all the 3D plugins you can use to generate 3D terrain with GeoLayers. Now these have different price points. I think Helium is probably the lowest. However, just be aware that Helium has an annual renewal. So I think you pay by the year and it's still quite cheap for how powerful it is. I have a standalone tutorial that I'll link down in the video description that I did last year that kind of does more of a deep dive into Helium. So I'm gonna click on Helium and that's gonna generate the project here. Now this specific 3D landscape project is set up, set up entirely different from a regular GeoLayers project. You navigate and basically control the map view differently. If you click on the map comps here, you'll see that you have a controller comp and then a texture and then a height map. So you can move the controller comp around, but if you wanna move the pitch, the bearing, or the elevation, you need to come down here and adjust these specific parameters. And a quick way to do this is to use keyboard shortcuts. So you can see this is to control the camera pitch, you have rotate or the X rotation. So just hit, so just grab this layer and hit R, and now you have your X rotation. You see it's set to 42. You can bring it all the way to, down to 60 to look across the landscape. Hit R to close that again. Bearing, you have rotate Z, for hit rotate for this. Go down to Z rotation, and now you can start to rotate it. Zero that out, and then position Z for the elevation. So if you move the Z here, it starts to move this up and down. So once you play around with this for a little bit, you'll start to get more comfortable with it. It's definitely a little weird at first. Now, if you come over here to this pink layer that says Helium, and you go to Effect Controls, you can see this is where your Helium Terrain effect is applied. And here you have your elevation slider. So you can start to crank up the elevation right here with this simple slider. Now it's looking really, really low quality. That's for two reasons. It's default to set at quarter resolution because this is pretty intense. And you wanna, um, if you wanna look at it in full resolution, first you need to finalize it. So control click finalize. That's gonna finalize one frame of the texture and the height. And then you need to actually switch it over to full resolution. And then you can full screen it in all of its Ultra HD 4K glory. And we still have like the demo watermark. Um, I need to register Helium. And you do that via this button right here. You click on register and then you can paste in your license code. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out from this default location. Let's say we wanna look at the Alps. So I'm in the controller comp here. I'm just gonna move this over to the Alps. What I wanna do here is I wanna be looking down, like I wanna be looking along the mountain chain of the Alps here. So I'm gonna go back down here and we're gonna go grab the bearing. So I'm gonna hit R for rotate and now I'm just gonna rotate this around. Again, switch this to quarter resolution so it actually is responsive. And now I can put it like this. I can go bump up the elevation, the Z position, something like this. It's not really looking to terrainy. I wanna bump up the terrain. So I'll go back to the helium layer and start to crank up this elevation. You can see I'm starting to get a little bit of a difference there. We'll maybe take it to 150. And let's put it to full and finalize it and see what it looks like. All right, it's looking pretty cool, but the terrain really isn't popping. So I can do two things. With Helium, I can actually utilize all of the benefits of the camera here. So if I double click the camera, I can actually enable depth of field. And I'm not entirely sure if it works seamlessly. I don't know what kind of black magic is going into this Helium plugin. But if you bring the f-stop way low, like to one, and then you crank up the blur level like really high, I'm talking high, like 600. This is probably gonna be way too much. But I wanna exaggerate this so you really see what's going on. 
Now, if we full screen it, you can see we have the blur here and the fall off right here. And it feels like it's very, like at 600%, I, th I think it should be like totally blurred out everything. So I don't know what is going on here. It might be some kind of weird rig. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know down in the comment section. Another thing we can do is I can right click here and go to new. Actually, what you can do is go to, with the composition selected, go to layer, new light. And you'll notice that these also react to lights. So if I go grab a spotlight so we can really see it and I crank up the intensity by a whole lot and make sure it has cast shadows, click on OK. That's gonna immediately activate that. Can't really see it that much. So I'm gonna grab the widget here and I'm gonna bring this down so we can see um, you know, the light a little bit closer to the terrain. And now if you look, you can start to see there are shadows here. So I can go right click, add another light, and you know, maybe add like an ambient, set to 35%, just give it some more light, light up the scene. And then we could also come back to the spotlight, just double click it, bring the intensity down. And you know, there's a whole art to lighting. We could spend so much time playing with the cone angle and all these different things. And of course, we're seeing all of this space up here. What I suggest for this is the reason I created an Ultra HD 4K comp is so I have the option to be able to go and just create a new composition and I can call this Master Final Final Version 5 or whatever we wanna call it. But just make sure it's set to a standard HD, 1920 by 1080, which is just gonna be fine and dandy for any kind of YouTube stuff you're doing. And what that is gonna allow us to do is bring in this map comp, the 3D landscape map comp, and now we have it full screen in all of its full screen glory. It's looking great. Now we can go back and just create a quick little animation. So let's go, let's say we wanna animate the bearing. I'll hit R for rotation, and we'll just add a keyframe here, kind of spin this around bring it down to quarter res so we can actually work with it. You know, we could just go ahead and spin it all the way around. See if it'll loop here. Now all I need to do is finalize this and now I'll render it out. Okay, as always, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more map content like this, subscribe to the channel, switch to the little notification bell so you get a notification every time I post so you don't forget about me. If you're a super hardcore map nerd and you're using GeoLayers 3, I have a GeoLayers 3 masterclass that I put out earlier this year. And if you want to go map god mode, check out my Patreon page. See ya! Special love and a big shout out to my tier 3 patrons. Thank you all so much for making this video possible. I appreciate it very much.